rolling. Okay. Um, we're uh, going to go through uh, just some basic setup and operations for a mile guide. Um, you're going to be receiving mile guide in this nice fitted case. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is just turn it around and, and zip it. See what we got inside. Okay. So what we have is a uh, mile guide unit, uh, some batteries, place for the cables, and there's some literature in here. We've got product registration card just uh, to let us know that you have the unit. Helps us with the warranty and the rest. Please fill it out and mail it in. And then um, we are shipping this with <coughs> both English and Spanish versions of the of the uh, manuals. Okay, so these are very uh, comprehensive manuals. Please have a look at them. They're, they're, they've got almost everything you need in here. Okay, so let's just put this stuff back in. Very handy, always where you need it. Very good. Okay, so let's uh, just pull out the mile guide. Comes uh, in a Ziploc bag. Uh, there'll be some, could be some protective tape on the display. Let's just take that off for illustration purposes. And here's the mile guide unit. Let's just go over a brief uh, review of what we have. Um, there's mile guides display. There's uh, up and down control keys, side to side control keys. This will move a cursor along the uh, menu over here to allow you to select the various parameters. We'll show you that. There's a mode key here that'll allow you to toggle between EMG mode and stimulation mode, and that's the on-off switch. On the uh, front panel, just at the head of the device, you have the input cable, labeled input cable, and uh, we'll be showing you, you know, what's going on with that, how to plug in the input cable in a minute. Um, if we flip it over, uh, we've got our little flip-up stand. Um, that allows you to, you know, set up the unit on the table as long as you're moving it uh, with the idea that it closes down like this and avoid closing on there, it works pretty well. Uh, and then there's the battery compartment. Um, we want to use uh, four AA batteries and we include four Duracell batteries when you get the unit. Um, Mile guide will operate on uh, any quality alkaline batteries, AA batteries, or the rechargeable type if you have those. To open, just push down, lift off, and there's a very uh, obvious way to put the batteries in. So let's uh, uh, open up these batteries, and we'll uh, load them up. So let's put them in very nicely. Can't go too far wrong. There we go. Okay, to close the lid, we just stick the tabs in here and push down. There you go. So now we're ready to turn mile guide on. What we do is we just push the on off button for a few seconds and it'll go on. Um, it'll Go on with the splash screen, give you the serial number and the version, software version. Um, it'll default in EMG mode. Um, it'll start off with the backlight off, but if you touch any button, it'll turn on. Um, so we're seeing just an open ended uh, EMG. Uh, this bar that you're seeing here is integrated EMG, but because it's open ended, it's just off at rail, so it's right up to the max. Um, and then we have uh, an RMS value over here. So at a glance you can see what's going on with the uh, power and the signal that you're viewing uh, using either integrated EMG or the RMS. Um, that's a little battery icon. It'll tell you how much uh, battery life you have left. Since these are new batteries, it's way up there. It gives you fair warning. Uh, you should be getting, if you use Mile Guide full time, say, uh, uh, maybe 20% stimulating, 80% uh, EMG, you'll get a good solid eight hours, if not more, on one set of batteries. Okay, now, when you turn the unit on, as we said, it defaults to EMG mode. 
Um, it also uh, will default to a volume level of four. That's the EMG audio volume. Now you can adjust that louder using uh, the up down keys. So let's just leave it at four. That's acceptable for this round. Um, if you want to uh, change the display parameters, and this is a relative display, you have vertical and horizontal sensitivity. So as we move, we use the side to side arrows to move the cursor over. So now we're in V, which is the vertical sensitivity. I mean, we can adjust that up or down. Um, as we go too high, you can see it's clipping the signal. So we want to pick uh, something that's good for viewing. Horizontal uh, sweep speed, we can uh, slow things down. Good for viewing uh, uh, systems where you have burst activity. It's what, really whatever you like to, uh, to see. Um, the, the next move is uh, to the notch filter setting. It defaults to on. Um, you could either use it or not use it. It's just personal preference. To shut it off, you just use the arrow keys on off. So we just leave it on. And then there's the backlight setting. Um, we'll just leave it on. You can start with no backlight, 30 seconds, and it'll shut off. 60 seconds, and it'll shut off, or just leave it on. For the purpose of this demonstration, we'll just leave it on. Now, if you do nothing with the mild guide unit, um, it'll automatically shut off after a period of time of inactivity. Um, that's just to conserve battery life. So there's no forgetting that you left it on if you put it away or, or something like that. It'll conserve by itself. Um, okay, so um, what other features do we have on here? Well, we've got the mode button. We're going to go over that in a second. Um, here's the speaker. This is where the EMG audio comes out. You got a full, uh, even though the system itself will, will indicate and show EMG uh, in a bandwidth of 10 to 700 hertz, the EMG audio is limited to 20 to 700 hertz because of the uh, speaker. But it's still uh, very good, high quality EMG audio, very similar to what, you're, uh, what you've trained on with a regular EMG machine. Now, uh, the other important feature that we have in the EMG mode is the uh, audio mute feature. And that allows you to uh, mute the audio uh, while you're in between patient encounters or you're setting up or whatever while leaving the machine on. So you just hit these two buttons simultaneously. You'll get an X over there and, you know, very clearly the audio will be off. If you touch any button, doesn't matter which one, it'll go back to the previously set volume level. So very convenient. So let's just quiet this down for a minute. Okay, let's uh, have a look over here. We've got the input cable. I'll just open that up. Now we've got the cable part that plugs in the plug that goes into the mild guide unit. It's a keyed connector, so there's no mistakes there. Uh, and uh, there's three touch proof connectors one for either a surface electrode or the needle electrode you might be using and then we have reference and ground. Everything's color keyed so that you know uh, which is which. Um, let's just plug that in. So that just plugs in very easily this way and you're ready to go. Now this cable is uh, an input guarded cable. You can almost see the everything quiets down once this thing is in. Um, it's uh, meant to create an extremely low noise, high quality signal uh, once you have things hooked up. Now, uh, your choices for electrodes, if you want to use the leaded surf surface electrodes, they'll just uh, plug right in. Um, if you, uh, and this of course is for the needle electrode, the black. If you uh, prefer to use tab or snap type electrodes, that's what these adapters are for. These two are color, color coded. So, just opening up the green one. And you can see the touch proof connector on one side and the alligator clip on the other. This will accommodate tab electrodes or it'll click on the snap electrodes. So what we want to do is just plug that in there and we complete the cable. And then the next one would be the red. And just take that out. Plug that in the same way. And you'll notice there are different lengths. Um, the reason for that is uh, after uh, testing mild guide for quite a while in the clinics, we established what the reasonable lengths are for these particular cables. Um, you can, if you choose to use mild guide as a just a single channel 
uh, EMG monitor, uh, wanted to use surface electrodes everywhere, we include this is a black one as well, so you could theoretically have three, um, three surface electrodes. But you know, normally you'd be using a needle electrode on this side, either a monopolar or a hypodermic needle electrode. Um, so that's the basic setup. Um, now, let's get into um, e-stem. For um, stimulation purposes, if you want to use uh, the stimulation function, you're going to change modes. So you just hold the mode button in for a couple of seconds, and it'll flip over to stimulation mode. Now, it'll say stimulating, but it is not stimulating because we're set to zero milliamps. Uh, going into stimulation mode from EMG mode, it'll always default to zero milliamps. Um, we have also a number of settings on the um, uh, choices over here that we can toggle through just uh, just by moving the uh, uh, the cursor over so we're using the side arrow uh, the first stop is frequency um, we set this up at the coming out of Intronix uh, at uh, 10 Hertz 500 microseconds so uh, you can reduce this we can st stimulate at 1 Hertz 3 Hertz 5 Hertz 7 Hertz and 10 Hertz so you have numerous choices it's up to you uh, we move it over to the next setting and we have pulse width control uh, you can adjust the pulse width uh, 500 microseconds 200 microseconds 100 microsecond and 50 microseconds um, we you know find that the wider pulse widths allow you to motivate uh, muscles at a much lower stimulation current much more comfortable for patients so the, you may want to be looking at some of the wider pulse widths, but once again, that's up to you. Again, we have uh, the backlight, and the backlight setting on EMG mode will be carried over to stimulation mode and vice versa. If you change it here, it'll show up change there. And then again, we have the battery power icon uh, uh, right over here to give you an indication of the battery. So let's just move back to the stimulation mode. Once this is set, we find most clinicians have a favorite setting. You, it'll just remember that setting, um, and it'll default at the current set, uh, adjustment uh, position, so you can just begin stimulating almost right off the bat. Now, to start the stimulation mode, you want to increase. It'll go up one milliamp at a time. We'll go up to a full 20 milliamps of constant current stimulation. With the wider pulse width, we find most uh, stimulation uh, um, to invoke a twitch response is generally around the 3-4 milliamp range. Um, now, you'll notice when we're stimulating, as soon as we start stimulating, um, the light goes on. That's indicating that you are generating a stimulation. Now, uh, some situations happen when you go in to start stimulating uh, to confirm you are where you are before injection. Um, that you have to reposition the needle. Should you have to do that, we're using the same pause feature that we did for the audio mute. Now it's for stimulation pause. So we hit these two buttons, you'll get an indication, stimulation paused, and then you can readjust, like just pull back a little bit, readjust the needle, in you go, and you touch any button, and you're stimulating again. And it will remember the last setting that you had for stimulation. You've got to reposition again, stimulation pause, push any button, it will start stimulating again, and you'll know you're stimulating because the light will go on, and it'll go back to stimulating. To go back to EMG mode, just hold button, it'll go into EMG mode, stimulation will shut off, um, and uh, you're, you're back if you want to uh, confirm that you're uh, still in muscle. And that's uh, mild guide in a nutshell. To shut it off, you just hold the power button on, and it'll shut off the unit. Thank you very much. Hope you found this interesting.